Hello, this is lecture number seven of the Fine Art Music Lectures. Um, today we're going to talk about the Woodwind family. And don't forget to take notes in your notebook on everything that you see on the screen down here uh, and also the things that I say. So here we go, picking up uh, with the woodwinds. So on the agenda today, we're going to talk about first how woodwind instruments produce sound, which is very important. Then we're going to talk about some uh, of the woodwind instruments in a little more detail. Uh, the flute, the oboe, clarinet, saxophone, and then lastly the bassoon. So we'll talk about the, those main instruments and then their um, sort of related instruments as well. So, how uh, sound is produced on a woodwind instrument? Um, it's by blowing on a column of air through the instrument in one of two ways. You can either blow over a tone hole that creates a vibration, or you can blow on a piece of wood that's called a reed, and then that reed vibrates, and that's where the vibration comes from. So again, you uh, produce the sound by blowing a column of air through an instrument in one of these two ways, a tone hole um, or through a reed. So the first of these instruments we're going to talk about is the flute. You can see flute on the top here right up there, um, and it is, uh, sound is created on a flute uh, by blowing across, across the sharp edge of the tone hole, which you can see on the far left side there, um, and they, it's kind of confusing for some people because the flute is not typically made out of wood, as you can see it's made out of metal, usually silver or nickel or something like that, sometimes gold, um, but they were originally made out of wood. Uh, and that's just sort of their, they're sort of traditionally part of the woodwind family. Um, so, and then there's also the piccolo, which is like the little brother, little sister of the flute. Uh, as you can see there, it's a little bit smaller. It's actually one octave higher. Um, so it, remember, smaller instruments make higher pitched sounds. So the piccolo is a smaller and higher pitched version of the flute. If you look really closely, you can see there are a lot of similarities in the ways that, the, uh, that some of the keys are laid out on there. Um, and then notice that there's a tone hole to blow into uh, for both. Um, so here's what it looks like to play a flute. Here's some guy I found on the internet um, playing the flute. Uh, you can notice where the lips go right over the tone hole, kind of blow over it in the way that you do uh, a soda bottle or something like that to get it to make a sound. And then notice the hands, or the fingers are laid out all across those keys to get the different notes to sound. So that's the flute. Next is the oboe, which is another high-pitched woodwind instrument. Now, instead of a, a tone hole, the oboe uses um, a pair of reeds, what's called a double reed. A double reed, that means there are two reeds that are bound together. There are two reeds, and you get them, and you slap them together and tie them with a piece of string. Those two reeds vibrate, of course, when you blow on them, and that's where the vibration comes from. You can see the reed at the top right um, of the uh, um, instrument, uh, both the English horn and the oboe. So it has a kind of slightly nasally sound, um, an exotic sound. It's, it's a very beautiful tone uh, if in the hands of a really good oboe player. Uh, and then the sort of big brother, big sister of the oboe is the English horn. Don't get confused between the English horn and the French horn. The French horn, remember, is a brass instrument. We're going to talk about that in the next lecture. Uh, but the English horn is very much like the oboe. But notice that they're very similar in the way that they're laid out. Um, the, a lot of the key structure looks the same, kind of like it does between flute and um, piccolo. So there you go. You have the oboe, and then it's sort of big brother, big sister, the English horn, that uses a double reed. Here's what it looks like playing an oboe. So over here, you'll see that we have someone playing uh, the English horn. And that is, uh, as you can see, a little bit longer. Um, reaches down a little further. You can also tell it's an English horn because it has that sort of, sort of bulbous um, bell. The very end of it, it kind of has a knob on there. So you can see it's a little bit longer. And you can also see the very top of it near the mouth is just slightly curved in towards the head. That's how you can tell it's an English horn uh, by looking at it. Uh, and then uh, down here, we have someone playing the um, oboe. As you can see, it's a little bit smaller. Um, 
uh, but looks very much the same as the English horn. So there you go. All right, next instrument is the clarinet. Uh, lots of you probably seen clarinets before. Um, it's blown through a mouthpiece with a single reed. So a lot of people get confused because the oboe looks pretty similar to the clarinet, but the biggest difference is, uh, one of the biggest differences is that the clarinet has a single reed. So it has a mouthpiece, as you can see on the top right there, um, it has a mouthpiece and then a single reed, meaning it does not have two put together, it's just one reed that's attached to a mouthpiece. Um, and then, of course, when you blow on that reed, it vibrates and that's where the sound comes from. Uh, and then below that, over here, you can see uh, that we have a bass clarinet. Um, it's basically the same as clarinet, only much, much larger, as you can probably tell by the fact that it is a bass. So it's a, a larger instrument with a lower, deeper sound, just like the relationship between the flute and the piccolo, and then the oboe and the English horn. The relationship between clarinet and bass clarinet is very similar. The fingerings are uh, a lot of the time the same. The way that the keys are laid out, if you look very carefully, is actually uh, very similar as well. So there you have it. And here is um, the director and filmmaker Woody Allen playing clarinet um, down there. He uh, is an avid clarinetist, jazz clarinetist. Um, and yeah, clarinet was used a lot in jazz um, before the saxophone sort of came along. So there you go. That's the clarinet. A typical soprano clarinet. Next instrument is the saxophone. So the saxophone um, often gets mistaken, in my experience, for a brass instrument because it's made out of metal. But make no mistake, the saxophone is a woodwind instrument. The saxophone is a woodwind instrument. Um, the reason that it's a woodwind instrument is because, like the clarinet, it uh, air is blown through a mouthpiece with a single reed. So it's actually very close to the clarinet, um, the saxophone is. Um, it's occasionally added to the orchestra. Uh, it wasn't added to the orchestra until the 20th century because the instrument wasn't invented until much before the 20th century. So um, that's why um, it's mostly used for jazz music. The reason that the saxophone um, replaced the clarinet in jazz music over the years is because the saxophone is louder. Before the days of um, microphones and clubs and sound systems and everything like that, um, the bands needed a way to cut over the sound of the crowd, so they started using those big metal saxophones that projected and were louder, uh, projected more and were louder than um, their sort of little brother clarinets. So yeah, alto is the all the alto saxophone and all the rest of the saxophones um, are made out of metal, but they are nonetheless woodwind instruments. So there are um, a bunch of different saxophones. Um, the first one I showed you just a second ago is the alto sax. Um, then we also have the tenor saxophone. You can tell it's a tenor because it has a um, sort of curved neck. It's a little bit bigger, um, just like when we're thinking about voice types. Uh, tenor is lower than alto, remember? Uh, and then the biggest one is the baritone saxophone, that one with the big, super curved in neck. Um, it's a really large, low instrument. It's almost as big as the bass saxophone. And then the one on the far left over there uh, is the soprano saxophone. And of course, that's the smallest. So if you think in voice types, of course, the soprano saxophone is going to be the highest pitch, then the alto, then the tenor, and then the baritone. So the reason I crossed out the soprano saxophone right over here uh, is because you almost never see a curved soprano saxophone like that. Instead, you almost always see the straight soprano saxophone. And uh, I like this picture other than that um, curved soprano saxophone. So there you go. All right, here are some examples of people playing saxophones. Uh, these are all uh, major jazz artists. Uh, Dick Oates on the far left there uh, is playing the soprano saxophone. Notice that there's an alto saxophone hanging from his neck. Um, so you can see that the soprano uh, it's straight and it's very small, especially compared to the alto. Uh, and then Charlie Parker in the middle there, the legendary uh, bebop jazz saxophonist playing the alto. It's a pretty small instrument. And then on the far right, right under here, 
uh, is uh, John Coltrane playing the tenor saxophone. And again, you can tell it's the tenor saxophone because it has that curved neck. The curved neck, the part right um, near where his mouth is, has a sort of curve, um, upward curve, unlike that of the, um, the alto saxophone. So there you have it. All right, last of the woodwind instruments for today is the bassoon. The bassoon uh, is sort of like the oboe, only it is the bass version of the oboe, if you will. It is um, a double reeded instrument, so it has two reeds that are attached together with a piece of string, so it has that same kind of nasally sound, although it's very low, so it's a very interesting sound. Um, it, again, it's the base of the woodwind family, um, and has a really, really beautiful sound. Um, it's a very complicated instrument to play with your left thumb alone. There are up to ten different keys um, that you need to play at any one time if you're a bassoonist, which is pretty uh, impressive. It's a lot of keys. Um, and then you can see just to the right of the bassoon there, we have the contra bassoon, which is like the double bassoon. Um, it can play notes lower than any other instrument in the orchestra. It's a big, long instrument. You can see it's wrapped in on itself several times. It's a very low, very deep, uh, beautiful bass sound. Um, so here's some examples of what it looks like to play uh, bassoon. Um, down here you can see just a regular bassoon. Just more or less a straight line, and then um, over here you can see the um, uh, contra bassoon, which rests on the floor uh, and is quite large. You can see even that um, fully grown guy over here, uh, you know, it's taller than him, so even when it's sitting on the floor. So there you have it. Uh, that is uh, woodwind instruments. Just to recap what we talked about today, um, we talked about how woodwind instruments produce sound, which is either blowing um, over a tone hole to produce a vibrating a vibration, uh, or to blow over a single or double reed. Um, and then um, we also talked about the flutes and piccolo, the oboe and the English horn, the clarinet and the bass clarinet, the saxophone family, uh, and the bassoon and contrabassoon, the sort of bass uh, woodwind instruments. So. That is it for our woodwind instruments for today. Up next is going to be the other families of instruments, so I'll see you next time.